everybody. In this video, I am going to show you how I make my wind spinner designs. Okay. This one is just an example. It's one I did earlier today. It is a cute little raccoon sitting on a park bench reading a book and it just says take time to pause. <clears throat> so I am going to show you how I make mine. Uh, this is really not a beginner beginner tutorial. I am assuming you know uh, how to use your AI generators, uh, Photoshop to some extent, and then we are going to use my designs to publish. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a prompt and I am going to go to the creative AR, AI prompt library and look around and find one I like today. And I think I really like this desert llama here. I'll show you that picture a little closer. That's the one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to copy the prompt from there. And I will leave a link below in the description for this library. Um, it is full of different prompts. So you always have something new to design and we add to it regularly. All right. So once I have my prompt picked, I am going to go to mid journey and I'm just going to paste the prompt in and hit enter. And we're going to let that generate our llama image for us. Alrighty, these are done. And now I'm just going to scroll through them and decide which one I like the most. That one's cute. That one's really cute. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one. And once I have the one selected that I want down here on the right, there is a zoom option. If you don't see it, click on more options and make sure zoom is ticked on. Okay. And I am going to select 1.5 zoom level. And what that's going to do is it's going to zoom out on my llama. It's going to give me more background and make the llama more centered on the image. If you can see it, it's doing its thing now. And right here is the one we used and above it is the new one and you see how much smaller the llama is it zoomed out and gave us more background well that's what we wanted and once i have it zoomed out i'm just going to save the image i am not going to upscale it or anything i don't need to at this point so i'm just going to save it as llama then i'm going to come into photoshop and i am going to create a new file that is 3,600 by 3,600, 300 DPI. That is the size I make all of my wind spinners. Some wind spinners are 12 inches by 12 inches. So this size of 3,600 by 3,600 or 12 by 12 will fit them. If somebody has a smaller wind spinner, they can always downsize the image to fit it, okay? So now that I have this uh, 3600 by 3600 blank, I am going to go and grab my wind spinner design. Well, let me drag this over here. And I'm just going to drag that in so it is in its own canvas. And I'm going to hit Control A. Whoops, wrong one. Control A. A and then control C. I'm going to paste it now into this 3600 by 3600 canvas. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Not a ton. And then I'm going to make sure it's centered. And now what I'm going to do is while I make sure that my layer is selected, I'm going to come over here to my magic wand tool and I'm going to select the background, all the area around my llama image. Then I am going to grab my generative fill panel and I'm just going to hit generative fill and generate. I'm not going to put anything in there. This works a lot like 
uh, when you are doing uh, seamless tumbler wraps. So you can also, it's the same process with it generating um, more of the background you already have. So this should be done in just a second. Alrighty, and you can see it has generated a nice big background for us. Our llama is dead center. And I'm gonna look through here and decide which one of these generative fills I like the best. I think I like this one. So I am gonna go down here and select merge down so they are one layer. And then I'm just gonna test this really quickly. I'm gonna come over here to this mock-up and I'm gonna double click on my smart object layer. I'm gonna control A, control C, and I'm gonna paste that into my smart object. So I'll get rid of that. And I'm gonna to have to resize this because it's huge. And I'm gonna pop that in there just so I can make sure that this is going to fit my wind spinner the way I want it to. So I'm gonna hit Control S and go back to my mock-up and you can see it has positioned that perfectly, just the way I wanted it. My llama is in the center and then I have all this really cool background out here on the fans or paddles, whatever you wanna call them, that help the wind spinner spin, okay? So if you're happy with it, that's great. Just come back to your, I can close that llama. I can close that smart object. Let me get this out of the way. This is our 300 by 300, or 3600 by 3600, 300 DPI image, okay? And we can double check that by going up here to our image size and you can See, our llama looks good. So all we're gonna do now is file, save a copy, and I'm gonna save it to my wind spinners folder as a PNG. And I'm gonna come down here and I am going to name this one Spinner 011 Desert Llama. Okay, and once that is saved, it is ready to move on to my designs for publishing. So what I will do next is I will open my designs. And on the left over here, I'm gonna select collections and I'm gonna select my wind spinners folder. I'm gonna open that up. And then I am going to upload my files that I want to turn into, that I want to publish. And let me grab my, I think that's it. Those are, that's the only one we're going to do today. So we're just going to upload that. I goofed up. I uploaded from the wrong folder. That's why I wasn't seeing the ones I thought I'd be seeing. So let me navigate to my wind spinner folder. And here, there we go. There we go. And now I am going to upload these three files that I got ready today. There we go. So we have a jellyfish that I did earlier, our llama that we just did, and the raccoon. So we're gonna upload all of those to their own listings. Okay, those are uploaded. Let me change my view, and I'm gonna select all three of these. And the first thing we'll do is go to Quick Actions Image Mockups. And I have a custom wind spinner mock-up uploaded. So that's what we're gonna use. We'll put that in file one and mock-up one. 
And then I'm going to turn on multi mock-ups because I do have a couple other mock-ups that I like to use. This is my download instruction mock-up and then a another wind spinner mock-up, okay? So I am going to have it generate all three of those and it will create these mock-ups for me and it'll only take a second or two. All right, and now you can see they are, let's turn this back to this view so you can see them better. There is our first mock-up, then our instruction download and then another mock-up, okay? So what we will do now is I'm gonna turn on the different view. Then I'm gonna to go to Vision AI. And in here, under product type, I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and select other. And I'm going to select my mock-up as the image that my designs looks at to pull information for my listing. So in here, it said, I said other, and it says, please specify. So in here, I'm going to type in what type of image this is or what type of product this is. A wind spinner sublimation design, 300 DPI transparent PNG. That's what it is. And we want the platform to be Etsy, and it's going to give me a description, a title, and it's going to generate tags. Now, I do have a default description that I do not want to lose. So down here at the bottom where it says writing mode, I'm going to select prepend instead of overwrite. So it just adds its description to my own. And in custom instructions, I usually tell it do not repeat words in the title or tags. It doesn't always work, but I like to tell it to do it anyway. And now it's going to generate my title, my tags, and a description for my products. So this one, the raccoon, take time to pause, wind spinner design, sublimation PNG, digital download for spinners, looks good. And then this one, Enhance your outdoor decor with this vibrant wind spinner sublimation design. Okay, and then we can look at our tags. Uh, wind spinner art, digital wind spinner, transparent. The only thing I'm noticing that I don't like is that it doesn't mention raccoon at all. So I'm going to edit this one. And I am going to add raccoon take time to pause wind spinner. I want raccoon in there. And then we'll look at this one. This one does say colorful llama wind spinner. Outdoor decoration. Let's check out our tags. They might not always be the great greatest. I'm not seeing anything about desert. So in this one, I'm going to replace colorful with Desert Llama, that looks good. And this one doesn't mention jellyfish in the title, so I am going to, oh, it does, but it's back here at the end. Jellyfish hanging ornament, I am going to add jellyfish to the beginning too. And once you go over your titles, tags, and description and make sure they say what you want them to say, then you can click on publish. And I'm going to go down here to Etsy digital and select files to sell. And I'm going to sell my main file. That's it. Just that 3600 by 3600 that we uploaded. Okay. And then next step, this is where you choose what order your mockups are in. I want this one first. I want this one second, and then my download instructions will be third, okay? 
and then you hit next step and then you get an overview of what it is next step and again you get a preview and you just verify everything's accurate here for your Etsy shop and then we click publish and it should only take just a couple of seconds for this to publish to your Etsy store and once that tells us it's completed we can go to our Etsy shop into our back office listings and draft and there are our three wind spinners that we just created and I'm going to select those three change section and I'm going to put that in the wind spinner files and apply and now I am just going to select those three again and I will hit publish and now they are active in my Etsy shop okay so that's how I make my wind spinner designs using Midjourney and the creative AI prompt library I just you know look for an interesting prompt and go with it or you can create your own prompts it's completely up to you but that is how we do it I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you have any questions please just drop them in the comments and I will answer you as soon as I can